Good evening. This is Ronald Coleman, inviting you to join Mrs. Coleman and me for the next half hour. And now, the Halls of Ivy. That's around us here today, and we will not forget all we be far, far away. Welcome again to Ivy, Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. Second, perhaps, on the list of well-known presidents who play the piano is William Todd Hunter Hall, president of Ivy College. He never was, nor will be, of concert caliber, but he has a journeyman knowledge of Bach, Bach, Berlin, Brahms, Beethoven, and Jelly Roll Morton. He's uh, quite modest about his musical accomplishments, and if you listen attentively, you'll see why. I'm playing with my gloves on. <laughs> uh, Vicky, it's nearly eight o'clock. We mustn't be late, you know. Yeah, I know, Toddy. I'll be there in a minute. I'm just putting my face on. Now, what could she possibly do to her face to improve it? It's perfect the way it is. Dedicated to Victoria Hall with glove. <laughs> with glove and kisses, my darling. <laughs> How do you think I do as a nightclub piano player? <laughs> Honky Tonk Paul. The dog who chased the kitten off the keys. <laughs> it doubles with thimble flute. Has own tuxedo. Will travel. <laughs> You'd be sensational. And I'd like to get into the act, too. Oh, well, in that case, we'll have to play the better bistro. Yeah, I'll sit on the piano and sing torchy songs with a long salmon-colored chiffon handkerchief and half a pound of blue eyeshadow. Wonderful. Wonderful. We'll bill ourselves as Hall and Cromwell. Not good, but loud. <laughs> Darling, we must hurry. It's 8.20, you know, and we're on the receiving line. Come on. Now, tell me again, darling, what is this faculty reception? Who's being received? Well, two visiting dignitaries. They constitute a committee. Ivy College is being inspected. For what? Political conformity? Sanitation? Possible site for a supermarket? <laughs> you ever hear of a Frenchman named Legrand? Of the Legrand Foundation? Made a fortune over here in cosmetics, I believe. No, but it's a great way to make a fortune, they tell me. Just think... The Indians painted their faces for hundreds of years and nobody made a nickel out of it. What a shame. Well, that was when men used the cosmetics. When the squaws began using it, the men started selling it. <laughs> <laughs> with the Indians, as with every race, everybody is out to make a fast buck. That's an old Cherokee epigram. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we got from Paris to Oklahoma. But what about Mr. Legrand? Well, he left a fortune to, to a foundation for the fostering of cultural relations between the United States and Europe, particularly France. One American college will be selected as a sort of uh, pilot plant to begin a program of exchange relations with French universities, visiting professors, exchange students, and so on. Hmm, how interesting. I should say that was something very much needed now. Oh, now, more than ever. The United Nations has given its blessing. And how good are our chances? Well, they've visited a score or more of colleges, and we happen to be the last on their schedule. Now, tonight they meet our nice faculty. And you. Think of that. After 20 colleges, they meet you. What a wonderful third act curtain. <laughs> what a finale. <laughs> oh, Vicky. No, oh, Vicky, it was you I was counting on to play them. <laughs> well, who are they, anyway? Well, uh, Simmons, who is connected with the foundation... And a man from the Sorbonne named Duvois, who will handle the French end of it. I gather the real decision will be up to Duvois. Hmm. Should we do anything to entertain them beyond this affair tonight? Well, they descended on us without warning, like bank examiners, and probably don't expect entertainment. But as a matter of fact, Vicky, I invited them to dinner tomorrow night. 
Well, how soon would you remember to tell me? <laughs> but uh, how about Mr. Wellman? Uh, Wellman is in Philadelphia, the, the city until now of brotherly love. Good. <laughs> well, you, you like Duvois, very urbane and courteous. Simmons is another kettle of fish entirely. Sardonic and inclined to throw his weight around. I've had dealings with him before. He's an alumnus of Bowser, incidentally. Well, here we are. The uh, faculty is beginning to arrive. We really look rather elegant when we're all dressed up, don't we? Yes. But I fear that the dim religious light of our auditorium conceals many a moth hole and shiny trouser seat. Even at Ivy, the temporal rewards of scholarship are slim. Uh, after you, Vicky, I'll hold the door. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Horton. Evening, Professor. Ah, Mr. Dubois. Have you and Mr. Simmons had a satisfactory day? I hope everyone was cooperative. Oh, yes, I think it is safe to say that we are favorably impressed with the physical plant and with the general caliber of the faculty. Well, that's gratifying. We are rather proud of both. Ah, but I at least do not feel that I have the, uh, the flavor, so to speak, of ivy, the uh, esprit. Uh, <coughs> what Professor Duvois means, Dr. Hall, is that we're interested in more than buildings, books, and professors. We are trying to sense the atmosphere of the place. A little difficult to absorb, I should say, in a one-day visit. Uh, in particular, we're convinced that the institution to be selected must show a genuine concern for culture in the best sense of the word. A concern which is not external or imposed from above, but which somehow permeates the whole student body. Yes, that is it. We want to know whether the students themselves embody the ideals of the institution. Precisely. The cultural test will be the cultural level of the student. Their general outlook, their deportment. Well, most of them, remember, are still in their teens. Even so, our hope is to find a real community of scholars, serious in purpose, devoted to the cultivation of things of the mind. Well, here at Ivy, we, we like to think of ourselves as carrying on the glorious tradition of Plato's Academy, of Aristotle's Lyceum, of the University of Paris in the days of St. Thomas and Albert the Great of Oxford in its finest era, of the Cambridge of Sir Isaac Newton. In short, we like to... Uh, Evans? What's that? Sounds like a riot. The students seem to be having... William, some time we must have won the basketball game. Oh, of course. Yes. Good. I wonder what the score was. Basketball game? Do you mean to tell me, Dr. Orr, that all this disturbance is made because of a basketball game? <laughs> Some of our American folkways may seem strange to you, Professor Dubois, but tonight our team was playing against Bowser College. Your school, Mr. Simmons. Huh? <laughs> In France, this sort of tumult could only be produced by politics. But... Oh, the lights! What happened? As if I didn't know. Well, the power must have failed. It, uh, uh, it happens occasionally when we win. Here, I'll we'll light a match. Let's find our coats. The reception is over anyway. Is this the way culture is permeating the Ivy student body, Dr. Hall? Well, one way, possibly. The culture is often acquired in quite peculiar fashion. A large and beautiful cultured pearl, for instance, is the result of irritating an oyster which, having a low-grade nervous system, is difficult to irritate. So, think how much better off we are with our easily abraded nerves. <laughs> think of the pearls we are producing. <laughs> ah, what a day this has been. I've had nothing but bulletins of disaster. Have they by any chance involved our two distinguished visitors? Well, how did you know? Marjorie Horton was just on the phone. She saw the most horrible thing a few minutes ago. Oh, not again. Some of the boys were having a snowball fight. Uh-oh, I know what's coming. And someone threw a Texas leaguer just as Mr. Simmons and Professor Dubois turned the corner by the chapel. Which one got it? <laughs> Mr. Simmons knocked his hat off, almost got his head. Of course, naturally, it would. Vicky, the whole day has been like that. Our young men and women of culture have gone mad. 
Those pearls I boasted of are acting more like like golf stones. Mm. <laughs> Isn't it awful? Just when we wanted to make a good impression. Of course, I can't blame the students for Duvois slipping on the ice this morning, but... <laughs> oh, Professor Duvois. Well, it must have been quite a spectacle. He landed right on his... Well, right on his... Uh, well, in his, in his own geography, it'd be somewhere around the Pyrenees. <laughs> No, but considerably ruffled in dignity. Nature may have been to blame for that. But when the alarm clock went off in the library reading room, it wasn't what the lawyers call an act of God. I suppose there's no way of convincing Simmons and Dubois that this sort of thing doesn't go on all the time. No, I'm sure there isn't. Nope, I've abandoned hope of the Legrand Award. I've just learned, for example, that the day they arrived at Bowser, the Paganini string quartet came to play. And a student production of King Lear opened the following night. It's strange. I never can think of Lear without thinking of Roger Marx. <laughs> well, doesn't it matter that we've already had the Paganinis and, and very well attended, too? And that the Dramatic Society is doing Twelfth Night next month? Mm, not after today, it doesn't. Nothing will. We are kaput. Oh, Toddy, I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, Vicky, let's just relax. Let's write this one off. We can't do anything to alter the decision that I'm sure they've made. Yeah, we'll just enjoy ourselves tonight. Socialists all get out. And not a word to them about Ivy or the Foundation or the students. And we'll pretend that the Grand Award is two bad words. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who uses them must have their mouths washed out with money. <laughs> <laughs> And I have always maintained, Doctor, that some of the sciences are, what would I say, uh, hampered by too technical language. It restricts not only understanding, but interest. Now, my husband has always believed that, Mr. Dubois. You should have heard him revise our astronomy professor's language. He not only brought it down to the man on the street, he dug a ditch ten feet below that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to admit that the trend in both academic and government circles is toward obfuscation. Gobble de gook, I think they call it. <laughs> a friend of mine, Dr. George Headley, wrote quite a fascinating ballad about it. He's the, um, the chaplain at Mills College in Oakland, California. Oh, yes. The second verse is the one I love, William. Can you remember it? Oh, I don't know. Let me see. Uh, how does it go? Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, uh, meaning is holocaust to your symbology. Life poured away in your verbal libation. Study of neighborhoods known as ecology. Love is a super-organic equation. Scholarships, all questionnaire compilations. Toss in the indices, term and cook. All is permitted but simplification in sociological gobbledygook. Shall <laughs> 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 yeah, we go into the other room? <laughs> oh, a delicious dinner, Mrs. Orr. Oh, well, thank you. I could soon become a convert to American ode to... Uh, Anglo-American cooking. Well, it's wholesome, at least. We're growing quite tall on it. A cigarette, Mr. Simmons, or a cigar? Uh, uh, yes, that would be very nice. Light, Professor Duvon. Uh, thank you. Thank you. By the way, uh, Dr. Hall. Yes? We haven't mentioned Ivy College all evening, although several times I tried to bring the matter up. Professor Duvon and I have several more questions. Oh, I'd be delighted to hear them. For example, uh, the background of the students interests us very much. Do they come largely from well-to-do homes, homes of culture? Well, they come from every kind of home, Mr. Simmons. There's a good average cross-section of American youth. You and Professor Duvois have now had an opportunity to see the college and the students. I, uh, I fear that you may not have seen them at their best, but, but basically they're a splendid lot. Sound to the core. And the cultural level here at Ivy is gratifyingly high. And the students do take an interest in things of the mind. That's why they are here. But they aren't happy about it. I only wish you had the opportunity to meet more of them individually. I feel sure that, um... Uh, <clears throat> uh, I'll go, dear. Uh, please excuse me, won't you? <clears throat> hello, Dr. Hall. Oh, hello, Wizard. Good evening. Won't you come in? Okay, fine. Wizard? Wizard? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see you about something, but 
Oh, not at all, Withers. Perfectly all right. Come in. You and Mrs. Hall have met, I believe. Oh, certainly we have. How are you? Oh, fine, thanks, Mrs. Hall. And I know our guests would like to meet you. Professor Zouvoir and Mr. Simmons, this is Wizard Lockett. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? Uh, uh, Wizard was captain of our freshman archery team this year. Well, we're doubly honored. The corpus, so to speak, of our recent discussion. Mr. Simmons and Professor Duvoir are visiting Ivy for a day or two. Yeah, I know. I... You're the guy I hit with that snowball this afternoon. Gee, I'm sure sorry, but it was getting kind of dark and... Yes, I am that guy. Well, I want to apologize. Well, sit down. Thanks. I started after you to see if you were hurt, but you're a long way off. Uh, <clears throat> tell me, Wizard, what is your chief interest? Philosophy, perhaps? Of course, you've seen Bertram Russell's recent volume on epistemology. Bertram Russell? Gosh, no, I, I guess I must have missed that one. Yeah. After all, Mr. Simmons, Wizard is just a freshman. Yes. Yeah. Perhaps the classical languages are your strong point. Well, I had a couple of years of Latin in high school. No? But... A scientist, perhaps? Or a mathematician? Oh, I'm not too good at math. Students don't usually choose their major field until after their freshman year, Mr. Simmons. Yes. Yeah. Literature, then. You're the type who'd feel at home in the 17th century, I'm sure. Do you know the metaphysical poet? Uh, the what? Uh, not literature. <laughs> then it must be music. Do you enjoy Debussy, Wizard, or are your tastes more strictly classical? Gosh, Dr. Hall, I guess I'm kind of in over my head. <laughs> what, what was it you wanted to see me about? We can go to the study if you like. Please ignore me. I merely thought this a capital opportunity to make trial of the cultural level of the students of Ivy College. It sounded to me more like an execution than a trial, Mr. Simmons. <laughs> Go on with him. I wonder if I should tell. This is going to sound kind of funny, but... Well, Dr. Hall, you know, this is Hell Week. Yes, the intelligence had somehow reached me. Hell Week? What uh, is a Hell Week? <laughs> <laughs> Part of fraternity initiation, Mr. <laughs> A quaint survival of some of Ivy's more ancient traditions. Yeah, I'm getting initiated this week. The boys at the house gave me the darndest thing to do. Well, this is sure going to sound funny. Uh, well, out with it, with her. I'm becoming inured to these things over the years. Uh, last year, a student was sent to mow my lawn. There were 18 inches of snow on the ground at the time. <laughs> Gee, I guess I should have asked Mrs. Hall. Yes. The students often consider me a more accessible avenue. A little more shady, too. Well, you can't back down now. Well, I do have to have it by tonight. <laughs> have to have what? A baby picture of Dr. Hall. Oh. <laughs> Magnificent. <laughs> baby picture. <laughs> the students of Ivy do take an interest in things of the mind. <laughs> yeah. A wizard. A wizard. Never let it be said that the president ever failed to heed the legitimate request of a student. But to the best of my knowledge, there is no baby picture of myself in existence. Had there been one, I assure you I would long since have made certain of its destruction. Ah, that's where you're wrong, William. <laughs> After we were married, your mother gave me an album devoted entirely to pictures of you. Oh, no. <laughs> so, your mission will not be a failure, with us. There are hundreds of baby pictures to choose from. You come with me. I have the album hidden in Dr. Hall's study, where you'd never think of looking. <laughs> Will you all excuse me? Of course we well, well, okay, but gee, I didn't realize it. Well, gentlemen, uh, I, and I think I'd better leave unfinished the little speech I was making about the cultural life of Ivy College. You might have difficulty putting a note of conviction into it. Ah, but this is very interesting. Do the students all feel free to come to your home on errands of this sort? Oh, certainly. Not that they do very often. Ah. I should hope not. In fact, the uh, the students are really very considerate of us. But uh, Whizzer, I'm afraid, was, was acting under a certain amount of duress. But surely the office of president carries with it its dignity. How can you lower yourself to fall in with this sort of horseplay? Uh, Mr. Simmons and Professor Duvois... My point of view may seem strange, but I do not consider that I am, as you put it, lowering myself when I treat a student with ordinary understanding and courtesy and uh, a small amount of humor. There is no divinity that hedges a college president. I like the students, and they know it. They know I'm on their side. So they think they can get away with anything? Oh, not at all, Mr. Simmons. Oh, no, no, you missed the point entirely. It is just because I have placed no artificial barriers between myself and the students that they don't try to get away with things. 
Mrs. Hall and I are treated with unfailing consideration and kindness. This sort of thing with Whizzer is... Uh, it's quite harmless. In fact, I find it rather amusing. And Whizzer is a very... Doctor, you're uh, sure to get this back to me. I think you chose the darlingest word. Gee, thanks, Mrs. Hall. I'll be careful with it. Yeah, come on. Show Dr. Hall which one you picked out. Well, uh, here. Hmm. Mm. Yes, I seem to have been a nudist in those days. <laughs> yes, yes, look, Mr. Simmons. Now, isn't that the cutest little curl over his forehead? Uh, <clears throat> me. <laughs> Whizzer, um, I, I presume you realize that you have in your hand a powerful instrument of blackmail. I am completely at your mercy. Oh, gosh, Dr. Hall, I'll get it back to you. Well, I I guess I'd better be going. Oh, must you? Yeah, I got a chemistry quiz in the morning, and, well, good night, Professor Dubois and, and Mr. Simmons. Very glad to have met you. Uh, good night, Mr. Uh, uh, I'll come to the door with you. Good night, Mr. Hall, and thanks for everything. Yeah, it's fun. Good night. <laughs> um, a whizzer. In consideration of the prompt return of this picture... I am prepared to drop the first payment in bills of small denomination done up in brown paper over the hedge by the cemetery, right? <laughs> Good night. <laughs> uh, don't worry, Dr. Hall. <laughs> so long. Well, Doctor, we've got to catch a train. We've both had a pleasant evening. But before we go, I think I can speak for Professor Dubois with regard to the Legrand Foundation. I want to be frank with you, Doctor. Oh, I think I know what you're going to tell me, that there isn't sufficient atmosphere of culture at Ivy to make it the ideal choice. Precisely. You've spared me the necessity to... Just a moment, Mr. Simmons. This is one occasion when you cannot speak for me. You understand, Dr. Orr, that the final decision is in my hands. As you must know, most of our work of investigation was done before we ever set out on this trip. Such things as academic standards, though they are matters of public record... Ivy stood well up among the colleges being considered. So, it became a matter of learning something of the spirit, the uh, atmosphere. I see, yes. Things which are not matters of public record. One of the purposes of our experiment is to permit European students to experience what is best and most valuable in America. What this country can uh, uniquely give to the world. And perhaps a foreigner can better determine that than an American. I see a, a respect for the individual as a human being, without consideration of race, creed, or station, exemplified in the way that you and Mrs. All uh, treated that boy this evening. I felt, uh, how shall I say it, a, a warmth, a sense of mutual respect and friendship that uh, quite overshadowed the frivolous errand on which he came. At times, I take frivolity quite seriously. Ah, but this is the kind of atmosphere which I would covet for the students of unhappy Europe. And that is why I have decided that Ivy should be the first college to take part in this experiment. Oh, William. Paul, if you can take it from a Bowser man, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, you will, of course, receive formal notification, but... Oh, that must be our care. Oh, no. So soon? Oh, well, I'll get your coat. We are indebted to you, Mrs. Hall, for a delightful evening. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad. Yeah, let, let me help you. I, I, I wish you could have stayed at Ivy longer. We usually try to keep our skeletons in the closet, but uh, well, perhaps another visit. Oh, right? I, I <laughs> hope so. <laughs> good night. Good night. Oh, good night. Good night. Good night. Thus is victory snatched from defeat. A minor miracle, I should say. No, just a major revelation, Toddy, of you as an individual. The French love individualism, you know. Yes, I suppose that was one of the reasons. And I doubt if Mr. Duvois has seen any other college president, even a picture of one, lying nude on a rug waving a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. Cute little curly did. I did have a certain amount of simple charm, didn't I? <laughs> Time at the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Ken Carpenter speaking. This 
listen to the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.